And yeah, right now, look, look at this, guys. Now I'm rich. I made a crypto bot. I have 17 Dogecoin. What's going on, right? So this is going to make me a millionaire in a couple of days, probably. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another video. What we're going to be doing today is building a crypto trading bot that's buying Dogecoin based on certain patterns that we can establish. What I basically did was I built a, a little bot using Node.js and Binance API to fetch real time data on, you know, existing Dogecoin sales, how much people are buying for, how much people are selling for. And then using that data, we can determine a couple of patterns that I found on line and you know if those patterns are met that we can execute a buy you know a buy call to binance api and then you know it just buys dogecoin puts it into our wallet and then we make millions of dollars right so what we're going to be going through today is i'm going to be demoing the app i'm going to be showing you um you know all the code required there's less than 100 lines of code in the, in the entire application so it's relatively simple and i'm going to be showing you guys you know all the apis you need and explaining a couple different things that you need to understand before we actually dive into the code right so as usual everyone if you enjoy the video please like down below you know subscribe to the channel it's completely free for you you know it means so much to me and you can always unsubscribe so with that being said let's just get right into the video okay so the first thing i kind of want to show you guys is what data we're actually going to be using to you know determine w whether it's a good or bad time to buy dogecoin right so this is kind of the, this is the data this is a visualization of the data that we're going to be pulling in and it's basically candlestick charts right it's we're going to be pulling in candlestick data now i, I had no idea what this was before I started building this bot. So I'll give you a quick explanation. Basically, each one of these columns represents a certain amount of time. In our case, each column represents one minute of time. Okay. And so if it's green, that means the price increased. And the bottom of the column is the price of Dogecoin at the beginning of that one minute. The top is the price of Dogecoin at the end of that one minute. So what the price it closed at. Okay. And now the red ones, the red columns mean that the price dropped. And so the, you know, the opposite applies. So when it drops, the top of the column is what the price was at the beginning of the minute. And the bottom was what the price was at the end of the minute. Okay. So this is essentially all the data we're using to determine certain patterns. And, you know, these lines are kind of, you know, irrelevant, but uh, what they mean is in any minute, the, to the top of the, uh, the top line represents, you know, the highest price that it was sold for in during that minute. And the bottom represents the lowest price that it sold for during that minute. Okay. So using this data, you can determine certain patterns. And if they, you know, happen, then you, you, you know, call the Binance API and we're buying Dogecoin. So the pattern specifically that I'm talking about is right here. It's called a th three line strike. Okay. And it's right here. We're looking at a candlestick chart and, um, you know, here it was, it was green and red, but in, in our example here, it's going to be white and black. Okay. So white represents an increase in the price and black represents a decrease in the price. And so what we're looking for is essentially this pattern right here, a three line strike. Basically, you know, the first minute the price drops, the second minute the price drops even lower and the third minute the price drops even lower. And then in the fourth one, you know, it, it reaches a bottom that is even lower than all three of the previous minutes, but it, it balloons up, it skyrockets up to higher than the first minute. Okay. So we're basically going to be looking at like these four minute intervals. And if this happens, then we're going to buy Dogecoin. And, you know, uh, allegedly, this says that uh, according to Bulkowski, whoever this guy is, uh, this pattern predicts higher prices with an 83% accuracy rate, right? So you see here it happened and then the price shot up. So I don't know if this is true. I don't know if this is bullshit, but we're going to be using this as an example of kind of our algorithm, our pattern that we're going to be looking for to buy the Dogecoin. And so um, there's, you know, there's a ton of different algorithms. There's a ton of different things, as you can see, that you can use. But for the sake of simplicity and for the sake of this video, I'm just going to implement this one solution and, you know, really show you guys that it's not that complicated to build one of these bots. So, you know, let's dive right into the code and kind of figure out what we're working with. Okay, so here we go. This is um, all the code in the entire app, right? It's under, as you can see, it's 94 lines. It's pretty basic. It's not that complex. And what we're using is a couple of, of packages, right? We're, this is written in Node. It's just, the, it's just the language that I'm most comfortable at. But a lot of people you'll see uh, are using Python and different languages. But I just figured, you know, I'd use Node.js. It's the language I'm most comfortable with. And there was libraries available for me. So it was relatively simple to implement. The packages we're using are Binance. You know, this is the, this is the most important. It, you know, we're able to actually get the data, you know, the pricing data and actually, you know, um, buy the coin, buy the coin. So this is essential. I'm using Axios to make the post request. Um, I'm using a crypto uh, to actually, you know, create keys 
create hash keys so I can, you know, sign my requests and be able to actually buy uh, the Dogecoin. And then, you know, I'm just using this uh, .env in order to, you know, hide my secret keys and my API keys from you guys because I don't want anyone, you know, buying Bitcoin with my account. I don't have that much or, you know, whatever, but, uh, you know, it's always safe to, to you know, use a, a package like .env. But, you know, essentially it's a relatively simple app. Basically I have three functions. Uh, this function is just pulling the data and then I have a buy function that actually calls the API. And then I have the three line strike uh, um, function that actually, you know, checks, checks my data, determines whether, you know, it's actually a correct time to buy and then it buys or it doesn't. So let's basically, first and foremost, let's just get some sample data and then determine what we're working with, okay? So the function that I'm using for uh, actually pulling the data is right here, binance.websockets.candlesticks. And candlesticks, you know, is that diagram I was, I was talking about, and it pulls in the price of Dogecoin right here in Bitcoin, okay? So we're actually using Bitcoin to buy the Dogecoin, and we're getting, um, we're getting the candlestick data in, in intervals of one minute. And basically what we can do is we get all this information here and I'm only pulling out certain data from uh, each tick that we're getting. Okay, so basically this candlesticks, uh, this candlesticks variable is what we're receiving every time the WebSocket actually calls and returns this information. And using that, I'm using the open price, the high price, the low price, the close, you know, how many actually were sold, the interval, which is one minute. And then this this variable we're going to be talking about later, but basically it tells us if you know this the existing candlestick we're looking at is the final one, which is really the only one that matters. And I'll explain why right now. So basically what I've done is I commented out the actual implementation and then what we're going to be doing is just, you know, uh, looking at what the information we're fetching is, right? So if I just run node index.js, so if I start my function, right? We're going to be getting data every couple of seconds from Binance about how much Dogecoin is being sold for what price, right? So right now here, open price 0.09 Bitcoin. The high, this is the high price, and you know, let's stop it here. But okay, so this is all the so this is all the data that we've received, right? I've stopped the function, and right here we have is finals true. But basically, this is what's happening, okay? Every couple of seconds, we're getting an updated, uh, you know, data about that one minute. And so right in, the, you know, right now this is the open price, this is the high price, the low price. The close price and this is how much dogecoin was actually sold okay so what you can see here is this is constantly increasing and because this is kind of like a count you know of how much dogecoin is being sold how many transactions are being made in that one minute and what this is final variable does is it just tells us that the minute is not over yet so the data is going to continue changing right so right here when it's true that means okay uh, the, the one minute is over and so this is the what the candlestick diagram would look like for that one minute right so you, you know when it's when is final is true we can see it opened here 0. 0.0009 bitcoin this was the low so you can see that it went down right so what it would look like is one of these black uh, columns that you know drop a bit and now the lines like I said before was the high and the low so you know a bit uh, the highest price was a bit higher than the open but that doesn't really matter and so the only thing that matters to us is to determine that it's a final tick that in that you know the minute is over and we can actually use this, this data because this, you know here when it's false it really isn't complete and it's not telling us you know the close price of that one minute is just that one minute so far Okay, so, you know, this is what we're working with. This is the kind of data that we're getting. It might be a bit confusing um, because they don't forget these prices are in Bitcoin, right? So that's why this isn't dollars. This isn't, this isn't CAD or USD. It's in Bitcoin. So obviously Bitcoin is like $40,000 right now. So obviously it's going to be very low because Dogecoin is like 40 cents or something. Um, and yeah, so now we can actually get into the implementation and figure out what we're actually doing. Okay, so basically what I'm going to be doing is only looking for the final tick, right? Because that's, like I said before, it's the only one that matters. And again, if you remember what I talked about before, this three line strike algorithm, we're basically looking for the last four minutes, correct? So what I did was I just initiated an array, last four, and then I push to that array. And you know, if, if the array is big, we always want the array to be four long, right? And so if there's four, you know, I just pop off the oldest, the oldest tick, and then I just, 
add, add the latest one. And then, you know, I check that if, you know, the array that we're working with has a length of four, then I run the actual algorithm to determine, is it a good price to buy? Is it a good time to buy or is it not? So here, what we can do is uh, look at this three line strike, this three line strike implementation, okay? So as you can see here, it keeps dropping and then the fourth minute, it just increases, right? So what I'm getting is for the every single minute, I'm getting the high and the low, the second high, second low, and so on and so forth. So I have the high and the low of every single minute. Then I check that, you know, the first low is greater than the second low. So, you know, it dropped, then it dropped again, then the high dropped, and the high dropped again. And then what I'm checking, and then what I'm checking is that, you know, the fourth minute, it, it's higher than the first high, and it's lower than the first low. So it basically encapsulates this entire scenario. And if this is true, then what I do is I call my buy function. Otherwise, I don't do anything into just consoles, don't buy yet, yet. So what is happening in the actual buy function? This is kind of the meat of the, the whole algorithm and the whole bot. And this is kind of the, the part that took the most time because using the Binance API was a bit confusing. So what we can do here is just look through the actual code and determine what properties we're passing through, right? So the symbol you have to pass through and what I'm passing through is Doge Bitcoin because I'm buying Doge using Bitcoin. And here I'm buying in market price and my quote order quantity is I'm buying 0.0001 Bitcoin worth of Dogecoin. All right, a bit confusing, but you know, if you need to go through again, you know, pause the video and go back. But basically I'm buying 0.0001 Bitcoin worth of Doge and that's it. And then you also have to pass through the timestamp, which I'm just, you know, determining right here in milliseconds in uh, epoch time. And then I'm just making a post request. And what, I have to, what you also have to include in the post request is a hash that you determine using uh, the query that you built as well as your secret key. So this is actually very important. This is the most important part. You, uh, the actual API call will not work if you don't include this hash. And basically the part that is very confusing and that is not mentioned really in the documentation is that you have to pass these through in the query string and not in the body. Okay, so I was trying to pass through symbol, side, type, all these stuff in the, in the body of the request, but you really have to pass it in through the query. And so, you know, once I did that, then it worked. And this is basically the entire bot, okay? So what we can do now is, you know, let's check if this buy function works, right? So let's look at, let's not run the entire algorithm, but let's just run the buy function, okay? So what we can do is look at my Binance account, all right? So this is my Binance wallet. This is how much Bitcoin and Dogecoin I have. I have $11 worth of Bitcoin, so it's 0 0.0003 bitcoins and then i have 7.9 doge coins which is roughly two dollars and 69 cents you know big baller i don't want to brag but this is a shit ton of money um and so what we're going to be doing is buying this doge coin with bitcoin so hopefully after i run this function this is gonna go down and I, my doge coin will probably double i'm not sure what the price is right now and so if i run it now let's see what happens we run it and what is happening in the response we got 200 printed it worked so let's check my balance right let's refresh and hopefully it went down there you go so now i have 0.0002 bitcoin and i have 17 doge so as you can see the call is working and i can successfully buy dogecoin with bitcoin and so all you have to do is essentially run this function it gets the ticker data every couple of seconds determines you know when each minute closes and then if this uh, if this algorithm is met, if this pattern actually works, then, you know, it'll say three line strike, buy the Dogecoin. Otherwise, it'll just print out don't buy yet. And that's really, guys, all you all you honestly need to actually build a crypto bot, right? Now, obviously, this is a super, super simple implementation. Um, it's less than 100 lines. You know, it's implementing one of uh, one pattern that I found online that, you know, might not be the most reliable. But, you know, there's nothing stopping you from implementing 20 of these patterns, checking for them every single time that, you know, you get some data from Binance. And, you know, if any of them are true, you buy. If, if some of them are true, you can sell. And you can really see how you can snowball this and kind of build a pretty complex trading bot. Um, with, you know, not that much, that's not that complicated with not that much work, not that crazy, you know, there's not any crazy packages, any crazy algorithms you have to do. And I just wanted to kind of make this video for you all to show you that, you know, even if you're not that experienced with coding, you know, it really just entails using this Binance API, 
uh, making a simple post request, and then doing some basic, you know, manipulation of data that we're getting in to kind of understand what we're processing and determine whether or not it's a good time to buy, it's a good time to sell, whatever, you, whatever you're thinking. Now, also, I forgot to mention that, you know, to use this, you are going to need an API key and a secret key. And you basically just do this on, um, on Binance, you know, you just make an account and then you basically just go to API management here and it'll show you your secret key, your API key, whatever you want. And yeah, right now, look, look at this guys. Now I'm rich. I made a crypto bot. I have 17 Dogecoin. What's going on, right? So this is going to make me a millionaire in a couple of days, probably. And you can, I think you guys should definitely try this out. Um, if Node.js isn't your most comfortable language, you don't have to do this. I'm pretty sure there's a Python equivalent of this API. Um, other exchanges probably have APIs as well that you can probably use in different languages. So, you know, don't basically, basically don't just, you know, limit yourself to what I'm showing you, but experiment. And I guarantee you that you guys can find some, some cool stuff to build, some cool algorithms online that you can use to basically build these little side projects, these little crypto bots. And I just want to reiterate, guys, that it's not that complicated and really everyone can do this. This just took me a couple of hours to figure out. The most complicated part was figuring out the Binance uh, documentation and getting these calls to work because there's not really that much detail online. And honestly, there's no real videos out there teaching you how to like, you know, step by step build a crypto trading bot. And so, you know, I just figured I'd make this myself and we can see what's going on and, you know, go through it together and just show you guys that it's not that hard. Right. So as always, if you've enjoyed the video, uh, leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel. It helps me out so much. If you guys have any other ideas, if you guys will just comment on this bot, you know, leave a comment down below, join the conversation. I love you all and have a good day. Enjoy your coding. All the best.